What's up guys and welcome to the channel and this is my review of the Coros Vertix 2. It is a phenomenal premium sport watch from Coros. Let's immediately start off with price because price I think is something that a lot of people are interested in when they're looking to buy a new watch. This retails for $699.99 in the US or £599 in the UK. So yes, admittedly it is a little on the expensive side, however it really doesn't come better than this. The features, the materials, the UI, they're all top notch. I'm going to be going over everything about this watch today. So when you buy the Vertex 2, you are quickly reminded of the quality the second you take it out of the box because it comes in this lovely flight case and if you open it up, that is quite a presentation. I gotta say, it just looks gorgeous sitting in that box. Now the Chorus Vertex 2 does come in two colors. I have it in obsidian, but it also comes in lava, which is an orange strap, and then the watch has kind of a silver bezel. When you take the Vertex 2 out of the box, you can immediately see that it has removable watch bands. These are 26 millimeter watch bands, and they clip on the watch just as easy as you would think. Now 26 millimeter watch bands are not as easy to come by on Amazon as the smaller strap sizes. But if you did need other straps, Chorus does sell replacement straps in different colors for $30 each. The bezel and cover are a titanium alloy and the lens is sapphire, making this a very rugged watch. Sapphire is the second hardest clear substance that we have on earth. So obviously it's going to hold up to some punishment. Now the Vertex 2 isn't a small watch. It is 51 millimeters in diameter and it weighs in at 89 grams or 3.1 ounces. So while it is on the bigger side of sports watches, I think on my 170 millimeter wrist, I think it fits pretty well. The display is 1.4 inches, has a 240 by 240 resolution and supports 64 colors. All that to say that it is pretty vibrant to look at in low light or when it's bright sunlight. Now, if you did have the original Vertex before this came out, you should know that Chorus is now using their next generation chipset and this watch is now 20% faster than the original Vertex. But what is it that Chorus is mainly known for? Everybody knows this. I can hear you all screaming at the computer right now. Now, it's battery life. So let's dig into battery life because that is probably what I'm most excited about with this watch. Let's just talk briefly about the GPS, how this watch tracks you around the world because that is going to tie nicely into the battery life. Of course, it's using a dual frequency GNSS chipset and you can use three different satellite settings depending on what your needs are. So when you are using standard GPS, this watch will last for 140 hours. That is sampling the satellites at a one second rate. 140 hours is more than most of us use usually go out and do an activity for. But if you have done an activity more than 140 hours, let me know in the comments below. Next up is all systems on. So when the watch is in standard GPS mode, it is only using GPS and QZSS. With all systems on, it can now pick up GLONASS, Galileo and Beidou. That sounds pretty good. But the third satellite setting is what I've had it set to the entire time I've had it. And that setting is all systems on plus dual frequency. So in a nutshell, this watch is going to be able to pick up two satellite systems at the same time in order to give you the most exact location data. This is really going to come in handy when you're running, when you're climbing, when you're doing something in an area where the satellite signal is reduced. So think about when you are mountain biking deep in the woods and you've got a heavy canopy cover over you. Let's say you're running in a big city and you've got big buildings towering overhead, but also if you you are climbing up a sheer rock face. When you are right against that rock face climbing, half the sky is blocked out. So when you're climbing, you've automatically cut out half the satellites that are providing you location data. But with the dual frequency setting, you can pick up the satellites from all over giving you a precise location. I have run under a lot of tree canopies where the GPS signal usually gets dropped and this is held onto the GPS like a champ. But we'll get more into that later. Just realized I didn't tell you about the battery life for all these different settings. I think now would be a good time to inject that you can download music to this watch. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. But if you have standard GPS and you're listening to music the entire time, this watch will still last 35 hours. When you have all systems on, the Vertex 2 will last 90 hours, nine zero. If you have all systems on and you're listening to music that drops it down to 30 hours and if you have the dual frequency so it's all systems and the dual frequency the vertex 2 will last 50 hours that's 50 hours of precise gps location data pretty phenomenal i have to say and of course there is an ultra max mode ultra max mode just sips on the battery samples location data from the satellites every couple of minutes and that will raise your battery time to 240 hours oh and of course this is a good looking watch if you didn't want to use it to track any activities and you just wanted to wear it as a watch this will last 60 days that's two months so let's just take a quick peek at my battery usage on the vertex 2 since i last charged it to 100 percent we're going to enter the toolbox by pressing the lower right button and we are going to scroll around until we find battery usage there it is and you can see right now i have 20 percent remaining now if i press the bezel 
it enters it. You can see there's a graph with how much battery usage I have left. But it goes a lot deeper than this. Let's press the bezel again and we can see that I have 20% remaining power. I have potentially 12 days left. With 20% left I still have 10 hours of GPS usage. It gives you the date that it was last charged to 100% and we can see that I have been 14 days without a charge. The Corus Vertex 2 is waterproof to 100 meters. It features an optical pulse oximeter, an optical heart rate sensor. It has an electrocardiogram sensor which measures your heart rate variability. The heart rate variability is a key metric to know how we're recovering. It has a barometric altimeter and a thermometer. It has a compass and of course a gyroscope. The Corus Vertex 2 does feature full offline topographical and street maps. Now this is gonna come in really handy even if you're not in activity because you can pull up the map screen, you can find out exactly where you are. Now when you're in the mapping system, you can use your finger to drag across the screen to move the map around. You use the rotating bezel on the side to zoom in and out, it's very handy. Furthermore, you can link your Vertex 2 with Strava so you can create routes in Strava and import them into your watch. And once your Strava and your Vertex 2 are linked, the routes automatically move over to the Chorus app from there you can download them to your watch. If you do have any questions on how to make a route in Strava and move it over to your Vertex 2, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'm happy to walk you through it or even create another video showing you how to do it. Now the mapping is slightly limited. There are no labels, there are no street names. So if you're looking to find out exactly where you are, you're going to have a difficult time because when you zoom in, you're only gonna see the trails, not the names of the trails. Now this could be something that Chorus can update via a firmware update in the future, but we'll have to wait for that. But I tell you guys, it's definitely an Option. There is plenty of space on this thing, so if they needed to push out something that took up a little more space, like more in-depth maps, they definitely have the space to put it on your watch because there are 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. Now we're rolling back into the whole music upload thing. So let me show you how you can pair your headphones, how you can put music onto your watch. So in order to pair some headphones, the first thing you're going to do is access your toolbox menu by pressing the lower right button on the watch. From there, you've got the bezel. I want you to find system, press that, you're going to enter music and add headphones. You're going to put your headphones into the pairing mode and then you're going to press add headphones. And here we see it's picked up Matt's AirPods Pro. We're going to select that. It's connecting and there we have it. They are connected. Now I'm ready to go for a run. Throw in the AirPods Pro and listen to music the whole time. So in order to move music onto the Vertex 2, it's going to be a little old fashioned. You're going to need the charging cord that came with it. And just while we're talking about the charging cord, it is a three prong cord to USB-A. But in order to move music onto the watch, you're going to need to plug this into your computer. Computer. And when you plug it into the computer, it's going to show up as a storage device. Now I'm using a MacBook, but it's going to be exactly the same protocol for file transfer on any computer that you use. As soon as the device shows up, you can see right here the Vertex 2 is on the left hand side. You are going to gather all your MP3s that you want to move onto the watch. Let's just take these six that I specifically put on my desktop to show you. We're gonna move them over into the Vertex folder. Now inside the Vertex folder, you've got two folders. You've got map and music. Obviously, we wanna drop the music in the music file. We're just gonna wait for them to upload. File transfer still takes a bit of time. And as soon as the file transfer is complete, you can go to your watch and enter the toolbox menu. You're gonna press music and there you go. All your music has been downloaded. This is where you can use the touch screen to move between tracks. If you want to play or pause, you can press the bezel. If you want to change the volume, you can press the speaker icon and then use the bezel to turn it up or turn it down. Can you hear this? Let me put that next to my microphone. Jamming out the Tupac. All right, the next feature I want to show you of the Vertex 2 is how you can sync it with your Insta360 One X2. You can also sync it with the One R, but I only have the One X2, so that's what I'm going to show you with. So to sync your Insta360 camera with your Vertex 2, you're going to make sure the camera's on. You are going to enter the toolbox by pressing the lower right-hand button, and you are going to scroll until you see Insta360 control. We're going to press that button, and it will automatically find the camera. And just like that, the watch is connected. Controlling your Insta360 One X2 is pretty basic. On the watch, you can scroll between video or photo and in order to take one of each you just press the button and in order to start recording or to take a photo you just press the bezel so let's go to photo and let's smile for the camera and that's what it looks like pretty neat now I have heard a lot of people talking down about this feature but I am actually pretty excited about it pretty handy this has been a feature I've been using a lot all right next up let's take a look at the electrocardiogram sensor this is measuring your heart rate variability we are going to enter the toolbox by pressing the lower right button and we are going to scroll until we find HRV test. Let's go ahead and press enter on that. You can see 
see the nice diagram. It's telling me what to do. Sit still and relax and put my fingers on the bezel and it will start measuring. It's gonna remind me to sit still. And this takes a minute to actually measure. So let's fast forward to the results. All right, well, that is less than ideal. It's telling me that my HRV index is 20 and my stress level is high. But that could just be because I'm filming a video right now. I'm going, doing a lot of stuff all at one time. Usually when I wake up in the morning and I do it, my stress level is non-existent. That's what I like to see. But right now, pretty stressed. Next up, let's try the optical pulse oximeter. And to test it, I'm gonna test it against a normal finger-based oximeter. So to access the pulse oximeter, we are going to get there the same way that we got to all the other tools. We're gonna to go by the toolbox, which is accessed by pressing the lower right-hand button. Then we are gonna use the bezel and we are gonna scroll until we see oximeter. If we press the bezel, it takes a second, it says it is measuring. And at the same time, I am gonna try and do this with one hand and I'm gonna put my finger in this. We're gonna see what happens. Okay, the finger-based pulse oximeter came up a little quicker. Right now it's measuring me at 98% oxygen in my blood. And it looks like any second now, the Vertex 2 is gonna give me a measurement. And there it is, 97. And if you notice, the finger oximeter did drop to 97. So that is pretty, that's pretty high praise for the Vertex 2 measuring identical to the finger-based oximeter. So let's talk a little about GPS accuracy. Now, I'm not really a fan of showing those maps where we line up several different watches and see how the line kind of wiggles, because it seems to me that there is always a little error. And unless a reviewer is going to spend the time to show you the entire run, to show you where each watch goes off course just a little bit, it seems a bit obvious that it's easy to pick and choose what we want to show the viewer. But with that said, I do want to show you a map. I just want to show you a map so we can see what we're working with. There are some specific areas on these maps that I've been looking for where I think the GPS anomalies are going to stand out a little more. So when I'm going for a run, generally speaking, I am running on the road and I'm running against traffic. And right now you can see this area of road that I'm running on. Now I'm comparing three different watches. The blue line is the Chorus Vertex 2. And we can see from above, they all look pretty good. So why don't we zoom in to this roundabout right here. And I have to say that all the watches are doing a fairly good job. They are staying in line fairly well. Now we can see that the Chorus Vertex 2, the blue line is doing remarkably better than either of the other two watches. As I said, I'm running on the left side of the road. So when I'm running westbound on my out route, you can see the blue line, the Vertex 2, is sticking mainly in the bike lane, which is where I was running. And although all three watches seem to be performing quite similar, as far as precision goes, it is quite clear to me that the Vertex 2 is the most precise with the GPS data. Next, I wanna draw your attention to this turn. So when I'm heading west and I turn south, you can see that all three lines are spread out. The blue line, the Vertex 2, is the nearest to the bike lane. Now I know that when I came around this corner and I started heading south, I was in the bike lane. I did not swing out into the middle of the road like the GPS data is suggesting. But still, the Vertex 2 is the more precise of the three watches I was testing this day. And it looks like when I was coming back, when I was heading north and then I took a right-hand turn to head east, it looks like the Chorus Vertex 2 and the red line, which was the Polar Vantage 2, they kind of, they stuck together pretty well. I did cut right across the intersection as the GPS data shows. So as I said, I don't like those spaghetti maps showing the different watches. I, I think they're less than ideal. I think they're fun to look at, but I would rather look at the end of a run. So when we're comparing watches, I want to know what they measure at the end of my run. I just want to show you a few of my runs that I've done recently. So let me put these three up on the screen. First of all, we can see here that the Vertex 2, I ran 7.4 miles. Next was the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra at 7.44 miles. And then I was using the Polar Grit X Pro at 7.45 miles. So pretty close. On this run, all three watches I was using, they, they came in pretty close, close enough. Let's look at another sample. This time I threw on a Garmin watch as well. We can see the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra came in at 10.47 miles. The Chorus Vertex 2 came in at 10.51 miles. The Polar Grit X Pro came in at 10.56 miles and the Garmin Phoenix 5X came in at 10.59 miles. Now we're showing a little more of a spread, but still because of the dual frequency sensors in the Chorus Vertex 2, I tend to put a little more stock into what this watch is telling me. And of course, after looking at those spaghetti graphs, and of course, looking at those spaghetti graphs, the Chorus Vertex 2 is actually keeping me on the line that I actually ran the most. All right, let's talk briefly about the, the UI, the user interface, because it is incredibly intuitive. This has been my first Chorus watch, so I'm getting used to a completely new system. But I gotta say, I'm really enjoying it. As you can already see, we have a three button 
button configuration. We have a top button, which is a light, and it can be programmed to something else. Right now, I have the top button set to a compass, so when I press and hold it, the compass shows up. As we've seen multiple times on this video already, the lower button accesses the toolbox. When we press that, we have a bunch of little icons, and we can use the rotating bezel on the side to access each of them. When you reach the one you want, you simply press enter, and then you can access the features of each individual icon. Here we are in the watch face icon. Now, briefly on the watch faces, there are, I don't know, maybe about 30 watch faces to choose from. Once you choose a watch face that you like, you can change the color. And then a lot of times, this lower right hand button allows you to change one of the little icons on the screen. So on this one, if we press the lower right hand button, you can see in the middle, I've got my daily exercise time. I've now got the sunrise at 7.37 a.m. The sunset is at 6.52 p.m. The watch is telling me I'm at an elevation of 37 feet and I've climbed two floors today. Not too shabby. From the watch face, if you simply rotate the rotating bezel, you access the daily data. And once you get into the daily data, you can set this in the app to show you the information that is most important to you. For example, I have the amount of time that I've worked out today. I've got my step count. We've got our running performance. This is one of my favorite screens that shows how optimized my training has been. It's got my recovery data. Oh, it says I'm at 4%, which is pretty poor. 90 hours until full recovery. I've got my heart rate throughout the day. I've got my sleep settings. Now, when you're rolling through any of these icons, if you press the bezel, you enter the next menu. And from there, you see even more information. Next up is the workout menu. This is probably the most important thing. This is why you're buying this watch, because you want to access these workout profiles. You simply press the rotating bezel and it comes right up. It defaults to run for me, because that was the last activity that I did. But you can scroll through and you can have indoor run, trail run, track run, hike, bike, indoor bike, strength. Listen, basically there are a load of activities that you can choose from. This can also be configured in the app so you don't have to see the activities that you will never do. I just want to show you guys about the workouts. This is something that you can configure in the Chorus app and then download them to the watch. So these are your workouts and you can set them up however you like. Okay, I just want to throw the app up on the screen right now to show you guys how good that this Chorus app really is. So on the bottom of the screen, you are going to see your daily activity. You're going to see your activity your all your workouts that little badge icon is going to show you some personal stats and then on the right hand side we've got the watch icon and that is how you customize your watch if you want to change the data screens if you want to customize the workout menu if you want to customize the toolbox all that can be done from this screen if you want to add new watch faces you simply tap the watch face and they all pop up and then from here you can select the one you want and download it to your watch it's a pretty solid sports watch. And I know that $700 or 600 pounds is it's quite expensive, but when you compare it to other products out there, I gotta say it's money well spent. If you have any specific questions about the Chorus Vertex, do go ahead and write me in the comments below. And as always, I post new running videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.